What up, Greenville? Woo -woo. Are you in the house? You're in your house. We're in our house, God's house. But we're excited that you guys are here. Um, we're excited that you joined us today to hear God's word. Obviously, we got the main man, Pastor Bobby. What up? And then uh, myself. Uh, I'm the worship director here, Jordan. I'm so excited to, to be here with you guys today. Yep. So let's dive into it. I'm excited. Yeah, so it's good that uh, you all get to join us today. And we're going to jump right in. We have been in this faith series uh, for like almost a year now, I think, yeah. which is totally appropriate. Uh, looking at the heroes of faith from the Old Testament, as well as looking at heroes in the New Testament and, and talking about what that means for us right. and how we can learn from their faith. And I think the one thing that we've noticed is that it's ordinary people, right. which I'm pretty ordinary. I don't know it about you. It makes me feel better. It does make me feel better. So it's ordinary people, but they do extraordinary things. And that's what we're going to continue to talk about and continue to look at today. And again, when we're looking at faith and what faith means, Hebrews is pretty clear that it is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And when people talk to me about my faith, I want them to to say that, dude, Bobby's faith, faith is off the charts. Right. He has an awesome faith. And, and again, that just being me believing that God is in control and that I trust him. But I want people to think my faith is off the charts, that my faith is amazing. It's huge, huge, huge. so huge, <laughs> and a, as strong as an ox or the size right. of a bus, uh, whatever. But if somebody said, well, y your faith is about the size of a mustard seed, I, I'll be honest, I'd be pretty, pretty devastated. Yeah. Um, because I feel like we got to have big faith, right? Right. And Jesus actually talks about faith the size of a mustard seed and how that size faith could move mountains. Move mountains. That kind of blows me away, right? Yeah. That, doesn't, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense to me. But we're going to look at that, and we can find that in Matthew chapter 17. All right, so I do want to give you the backstory uh, because it's very important that we know what happened prior to the scripture that we're getting ready to read. So I do want to remind everybody several weeks ago we had a full sermon about this, and this is when uh, Jesus goes up on a mountain with his disciples, a few of his disciples, and they have this amazing experience up there. But then they come down, and they come down to a mess. And there's a, the remaining disciples down there, they're, they're in a crowd of people. It's loud, there's a lot going on. And Jesus walks up to find out what's up, basically. Mm -hmm. And out of the crowd, a dad comes, comes forward and says, Listen, my, I was bringing my son to you uh, to heal him, and you weren't here, so I had to deal with your disciples. It's, it's really not like an illness like we would think, or seizures mm -hmm. like we would think. He was actually possessed by a demon. Right. The disciples were there. They were available to take care of this in Jesus' okay. absence, but they were unable to cast out the demon. And the dad is like, so... Jesus, can you help me? And it's at this point that um, Jesus is a little frustrated. He's a little upset. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to respond to everything that's gone on to this point. So now we're at Matthew chapter 17, verses 17 through 20. I'm going to read that. It says, Jesus replied, You unbelieving and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And from that moment, the boy was healed. Then the disciples approached Jesus privately and said, Why couldn't we drive it out? Because of your little faith, he told them. For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, the one that they were just up on, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible 
for you. So when I read that scripture, I'm like, man, how small uh, their faith must have been in the eyes of Jesus. I mean, it's at this point that, that Jesus is comparing their faith to a mustard seed, which was one of the smallest seeds that there was. Right. And so when he's telling them that, look, you're an unbelieving generation, he's talking to the people, to the crowd, but he's also talking to his disciples, the ones that have spent years with him at this mm -hmm. point. And so he's disappointed in their little faith. Little faith even compared to a mustard seed. The mustard right. seed seemed huge compared to the disciples' faith. And that's that, that would be a tough pill to swallow to be yeah. told that from your from your mentor, mm -hmm. from your teacher, from your God. I just think that would be pretty rough. Yeah, I mean when I first really went back into the scripture and I remember when you gave the sermon and everything, I remember thinking back, what happened with these disciples, these people who have been walking with Jesus because he's saying that their faith is smaller than a mustard seed. So as we would think, if a mustard seed... So I'm not even familiar really with a mustard seed. So tiny, like so a much. poppy seed or, you know, like a millimeter, mm -hmm. so small. It's even smaller than that. It's almost non-existent. You can't even see it, right, mm -hmm. compared to a mustard seed. So I'm thinking back, and I'm thinking back when you did the sermon and looking back into scripture, and I remember... And, and looking back into it, the disciples had been healing people before this. Mm -hmm. They were sent out two by two, right. and they were going out, and they were healing people, healing people who were sick or injured, whatever, and doing these crazy miracles. Right. And then all of a sudden, there's this boy that needs help, who is also ill, who is possessed, and they can't heal him. Right. So obviously, there was a shift, because Jesus is saying in the scripture that if they have faith, even as small as a mustard seed that they could do it. So there was a point where they had that faith because they were healing people. And now what happened? And it, it was kind of hard for me to, to deal with that because I'm exactly. like, okay, you're walking with Jesus. Where would your faith go? But, you would think their faith would be growing and they, they right. would be getting better at it. You're healing people through yeah. Christ. Like, why wouldn't you have the biggest faith ever? Yeah. And they're not able to heal this boy but I think about my faith and I reflect on it and how often do we forget? We go through life and I think there's a realization that we need Christ and mm -hmm. we need to rely on Him. and It's through Him that we have this faith. But then we get through our routine and we get things going, everything's doing okay. And that shift happens where I feel like it's not on God anymore, mm -hmm. but it's on ourselves. And it's like, what what can we do if only my faith, if I could if I could grow my faith, yeah. if I could do more, then God can do this. Right. And it, it shifts to us. Yeah. And so I can see this happening for the disciples. They had been healing these people and now they're thinking, oh, well then I can do it maybe or I don't need God as much. Exactly. And this shift of faith is going from God to themselves. Yeah. yeah. And for him to say, if you just had the faith the size of a mustard right. seed, right? That's the part that if you just had that. So it's, it's not really the size of our faith. It's not how much faith or the, the quantity of our faith, if you will. It's really the size of our God. Right. And that's really, I think, the, the point that Jesus is trying to make to his disciples. If you just had a little bit of faith... What my heavenly father could do, what mm -hmm. I could do with just your little bit of faith, right? right? But your all's faith isn't even a blip on the radar. But it's all about who we are rooted in and what our faith is rooted in, not so much in our abilities or how much faith that we have, but in right. God, rooted in God. Because ultimately, God is the source. God is the source of our faith. and. And when Jesus is talking about a mustard seed, and if you had that kind of faith, you could move mountains. We're not, look, some, some of us, I think, get hung up on the idea of moving mountains. Yeah. It's like, could I really... I'm feeling I, Jedi 
in the last movie. That's right. <laughs> or the couple movies back when she's like moving rocks and stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. and then if you can't, well, young Padawan, learned, yeah. you know, you just, <laughs> right. you haven't achieved that level of faith yet. But it's not about moving mountains mm -hmm. at all. That's not the point. So it's not like we should set out on a rock and try to move a mountain to, to test our faith. He could care less about the mountain. He's trying to prove a point. And that's why this analogy, I think, of the, the mustard seed teaches us so much about faith and really what we need mm -hmm. to have faith that just that little bit of faith right. in God can take care of the rest. That we can do the impossible. That's right. You know, and I'm such a visual person, so these kind of things, these analogies, descriptions, whatever, parables, that we see a lot in Scripture just make it click for me. Yeah. You know, and even not being someone who, you know, never really saw a mustard seed until I did my little research for right. this, you yeah. know, I hadn't really seen it before. Sure. Um, made me think back to our old house. Um, and I, we, we moved there when I was like four or five. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this was, a, this was a while ago. A little bit. And <laughs> just a tad. And I remember looking back and seeing videos and um, pictures of us in our front yard. And we had a ton of trees in our front yard. And we're just running around Which them. were amazing. Though. They were. He's obsessed yeah. with his trees. That's right. Don't get him started. Okay. But um, we have all these trees in our front yard. And there's one in particular that looking back at these videos, I'm going, wait a minute. That's not the same tree because it is so small. It's like. So the video that I remember, you all were out playing in the snow. Yes. You three girls. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the tree, it's a pine Tiny. tree. Well, so, there's some pine trees out there. Yeah. And then there's the one tree. Um, the other one. The, the other one. It's like a regular tree. Yeah, it's like the other one. <laughs> um, but it's so small. Yeah. And we're and running circles around. the pine tree around. look like... They're tiny. They look like a <laughs> Christmas small tree. Christmas tree. Yeah. Like super small Christmas and tree. And we're running around and it doesn't even look like the same yard even from when we moved. And that's comparing it to a smaller tree to when we moved, it was the size of our house, if not larger. And we had an A-frame house, which is pretty yeah. tall. And this yeah, tree is ginormous. Tree was, and we're close to 40 feet tall. Yes. And you could probably put about 10 people around right. the body of this tree, <laughs> right. right? And now it, all the trees are like touching up. each other. There's no room in this yard. Right. Um, and it's right. just amazing to look at what God can do just with creation of something starting out so small, even from a small tree to a large tree. But if we look at a mustard seed... Which even if you go further back than that, I mean, the tree was once, once a I seed. guess, a seed. Yeah, yeah, right? So it's even hard for us to picture just a small tree to a big tree, but thinking about a mustard seed is so small. And particularly what they're referencing um, when you look into just historical things that, that most likely Jesus would have referenced. There's two types of seeds with the mustard seed. This one would probably be the black one, mm -hmm. which is a little bit smaller. They're both really tiny. Um, but this one is so small that you could fit about 40 to 50 easily on a penny. These seeds. These seeds. Not stacked, right? Not stacked, just, just flat. flat. Yeah. So yeah. small. I mean, just could easily be blown away. Right, um, right. You probably wouldn't even know it was a seed. But once planted, these mustard seeds grow into a plant that resembles a tree. It's so big, 10 to 15 feet in height. So something so small, once planted, can grow into something so big right. that, you know, has shade and animals can get in the shade and birds can go on its branches and all these yeah, things. Yeah, what's that to support a bird? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to be that, pretty substantial, yeah. you know what I mean, to, to be able to do that. So it looked like a tree, it was that large. And so thinking about this mustard seed, you know, though God can do so much with something so small, mm -hmm. I know that that's not what he wants for us. He wants more for us. He wants our faith to grow because, well, and he says it in scripture, mm -hmm. you know, that he wants us to grow in our connection with him mm -hmm. and rely on him. And he understands the benefits of that and constantly talking about nurturing our faith. So like the mustard seed, if you just have the seed in your hand, the seed isn't going to do anything. It's useless. It's just going to remain a seed. Right. But once it's planted and nurtured, once it's put in rich soil, mm -hmm. and once it's given water and gets plenty of sunlight, it's in the right environment temperature-wise, it's protected from the elements, 
it can grow. Mm -hmm. And even more so from just what kind of things is being fed into it, but it's what is being protected from it, right? So we have to make sure that things aren't getting to the plant like pests or insects or weeds even um, could overtake this plant or right. and not even just that but diseases i never even thought about i'm not much of a planter <laughs> right. but i never yeah. really thought about diseases of a plant yeah. but a mustard uh, plant can actually get this white rust on it and it starts with one leaf and can spread if it's not caught and and plucked basically take taking mm -hmm. that disease leaf out if you don't do that, mm -hmm. it could die. Right. It could infect the base. So after all that kind of research and looking into that and really reflecting on it, the question is, one, do we even have the faith a size of a mustard seed? Mm -hmm. And if we do, are we working to nurture mm -hmm. that faith Absolutely. like you would nurture a plant to grow deep into the ground and grow tall where it can be seen? Right, because I think all of us want our faith to grow. I don't think anybody wants to have right. tiny little faith. We, we want our faith to grow. And so just thinking about what you talked about with nurturing and protecting the, the mustard seed, I think that we have to nurture and protect uh, things in our life in order for our faith to grow. Right. And I think we should talk about a couple of those things, ways that we can nurture and protect. Obviously, we can be in God's Word. We, we can be in the Bible. I mean, that's His right. love letter to us. Mm -hmm. We can pray and we can talk to Him. Uh, I think it's important that we be mindful of the environments that we're in, as well as uh, that the main source of that growth, much like a seed or a plant, is the sun. Right. And except in our case is the S-O-N sun, right? right. It's Jesus, <laughs> the Son of God. And so I think we should dive into some scripture that kind of highlight these points mm -hmm. uh, that we just talked about. So, so we're going to uh, start with the Bible and being in God's Word and the importance of being in God's Word. So I want to start with 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'd like for us to look at what it says. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach. It's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It connects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That's good. So when, when I read that scripture, I mean, there's so many things that jump off the page to me. First of all, if I'm going to read something, I, I want it to be useful. Otherwise, I'm not going to read it. I'm not much of a reader Neither anyway. No. Um, so it needs to be super useful. Mm -hmm. So to know right out of the, the gate that, first of all, this is God's Word, God-inspired mm -hmm. Word, and it's His love letter to us, it, it, it's critical for us to wrap our minds around that. And to also understand that, again, it's useful to teach. We all want to know the truth. We all want to have knowledge about the truth um, and know what is right. We want to know what's wrong in our lives and how to fix it. I mean, we don't want our lives to be screwed up and us to be miserable. Right. Well, that's the instruction manual right there. It's like the how to live kind of manual, right? That God, the creator of the universe, provided to us and gave to us. But oftentimes it'll set on a dresser or it's an app on our phone that we never open up. And it's clear when it says it will prepare us, it will equip us to do good works, right? For his kingdom. And I, I just think that knowing that and trusting that and believing that we have to get into his word. And that is one way to nurture and protect um, our faith. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a thing. We have a girls small group. It just popped into my head okay. and there was an illustration for the need of going into the word, why we should be getting and, and really seeing it as an instruction manual for our lives. Now we all know Ikea, 
right? That's right. IKEA and how terrifying it is to get a new piece of furniture and try to put it together. Um, but imagine yes. trying to because put they'll in put a couch in a box <laughs> this small. Figure you know, it out. Ten feet long and you know like this. Right. Some and assembly it's, required. Exactly. Right. And trying to make that furniture without the instructions. And how many times you would have to assemble and reassemble and reassemble. And that's what we do with our lives without mm -hmm. the word. We go through and we fail and we have to figure out what to do next. And the Bible is a way, God's love letter of instruction, telling us how to prevent you, know, you from being in pain or yeah. hurt, um, to protect our hearts. And when we don't go into the word, how do we know to do these mm -hmm. things? How do we know to live our lives? And, it's going to be through trial and error, and we're still going to deal with that because we're not perfect. But I just love that visual. You wouldn't try to make furniture without instructions. No. So why all. should you go through life without instructions from the one who knows it all? Exactly. So. Exactly. Uh, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I'm right there with you. So the other thing that we talked about was prayer. And if you go back to the story that we led off with, which was... Uh, the dad who brought his son to be healed and we worked our way through that story and the disciples were like what did we do wrong tell us and he obviously started to talk to them about their faith and how how small their faith was if you were to go from matthew's account of things and look at mark's account again i just want to read what mark 9 29 says and again this is mark's account and he's talking about Jesus and he told them this kind can come out by nothing but prayer so again not their efforts not their abilities right. by prayer and then again looking further at prayer and what what God has to say about the importance of prayer and again he, he's given us this instruction manual and mm -hmm. and I know that you were talking about First of all, relationships and... Right. You can't have a relationship with someone before. without communication. Yeah. Right? Or it's a bad relationship if it's bad communication. Right. I think we can look at all of the relationships, friendships, um, you know, romantic relationships, whatever the case may be, or even just family members. Your best relationships are probably connected to having good communication, mm -hmm. healthy, um, consistent communication right. and so why do we look differently with God and our relationship and connection with him um, it says in Philippians 4 chapter 4 mm -hmm. verses 6 through 7 it says don't worry about anything instead pray about everything mm -hmm. and I love this part tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. So he's telling us, he's wanting us to go to him. He wants us to go to him and tell him what we need, mm -hmm. to thank him, to be in that communication with him. And prayer, to me, I'm going to be honest, is a little in intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can look at, you know, if we want to stick with planting, you can tell me, you know, you need to water your plants. I'm going to go, okay, how much water does it need? How much is too much water? How much is not enough water? And so we can look at that with prayer, and it can get a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I pray? How do I start? And, right. you know, we can look back and I encourage you guys to look up, go in your Bible apps, go in your Bible, um, Google it, the Lord's Prayer. That's Jesus telling us how to pray. Sure, demonstrating that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, so you can look into the Lord's Prayer, but it still is a little confusing to me. And there's something that I found and I've heard it a lot of a, of a way that it can be broken down into four parts. So this is going off of the Lord's Prayer and what Jesus is telling us. And how we should pray. What are the, the things that we should kind of hit in our prayers? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always have to be exactly like this, but it's sure. a great way to start. Yeah. And you can build it off of acts. So A-C-T-S. So first being adoration. So if we start our prayer 
with adoration or being in awe or having a reverence for a respect for who God is mm -hmm. and starting off with that, Lord, you are so amazing. Sure. We thank you that you are greater than us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus and, and going through all of them, you know, the Lord God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Jesus for being our savior, saying who he is, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, Spirit being our power, right? And starting with adoration for who God is. Then we shift to C, confession. So who God is is first, and then who we are without him. Okay. So Lord, please help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for not being faithful, for not going to you in prayer, for not going to you in the word. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is for you, confession, giving it to God, and asking for forgiveness. So adoration, confession, and then T, thanksgiving. That's such an important part after we've talked about who God is and we're asking for forgiveness of our sins to thank God for what he's done in our past, mm -hmm. what he's doing in our present, and what he's doing in our future. And taking the time it says in Philippians to thank him, mm -hmm. to tell him what we need and to thank God. And then the last one is supplication. And at first uh, you go, what's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? I yeah. had to Google it. That's right. um, so I did my little research. But it's asking humbly or earnestly, sincerely. So asking. So going back again into Philippians, it's saying, it, it says very specifically, tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. And so that's the last thing that we're going to hit in our prayers. And I love that it's at the end because I think what we ask for changes when we first address who God is, address who we are without him in confession and then thank him. And then to go to him with what we need right now. I know you look back in Philippians, it says, don't worry about anything. I'm going to be real. I'm worried about a lot of things. Right. I'm freaking out. Um, it's a very scary, it can be a very scary time. Mm -hmm. And I think back and all the times I'm worrying, where am I going with my worry? I'm most of the time not going to God with yeah. it, unfortunately, or going into the word with it. Which if you go back and you look at Philippians, right, and that you just read just a minute ago, it said pray about everything. everything. And like you, like me, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we try to fix it ourselves. We try to uh, mentally process things and, and just kind of handle it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Maybe we even, you know, talk to some friends that we can rely on or our parents or whatever to uh, help us cope and deal with things. Mm -hmm. And then if we can't, then, right. yeah. you know, God's like a uh, fail safe, mm -hmm. you know, uh, praying and talking to God. That's like, that's a last resort. <laughs> right. I'm not going to do that. It's you know, so sad, but it's so true. <laughs> it really is. It is. And it's, when you think about it, it's like, man, I'm going to go to the God and creator of the universe last. The whatever. one who's in control. Right. The one who knows it all. Yeah, it's like, hey, maybe I should lead off with that. Yeah, that's yeah, an idea. Let's just start with that. And it says that this is where you're going to experience God's peace. Which I think we all want a sense of peace. Right. There, you know, peace can kind of be like love in a way. You can't, it's hard to explain mm -hmm. or to define it or to, to try and describe what it is that you're going through uh, other than to say, I just, I just know I'm in love, right? Um, but when you talk about just having God's peace, I can't explain it. It's just this, and it can even be in the chaos. Yeah. There can be an immense amount of chaos going on around us, but somehow we're just at peace. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, with faith, we're, we're never promised to not have problems and not have issues. If you go back in scripture and you think of stories like Daniel, mm -hmm. faith did not keep Daniel out of the lion's den, right. but it preserved him and it sustained him and it, mm -hmm. and it ultimately saved him and, and got him through that period of time. When you think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those three guys that got thrown in the fiery furnace, right. it wasn't that faith didn't keep them out of the furnace. It was mm -hmm. faith that, again, protected them, nurtured them, sustained them through that time. And I right. think that as we are dealing with the coronavirus, it could be 
the stressors that come from our jobs or right. maybe we're in school and and you know we're stressed out about those kinds of things and struggling with those things maybe it's our own personal illnesses but it is our faith that can sustain us even amongst the chaos and I think that's pretty powerful and then it talks about how it guards our hearts mm -hmm. and guards our minds uh, when we pray and when we're at peace right. with God and I think that's a, a pretty powerful thing the other thing is I think controlling our environment a little bit and there Absolutely. are some things about our environment that we don't control right. if we talk about coronavirus we can't necessarily control the coronavirus but I can control how much I get into social media right. what I post on social media all those types of things mm -hmm. I think there's some other environmental things that we need to take into consideration because you mentioned with the mustard seed you were talking about environment too which refreshed Weeds my memory. getting into it okay. pests and you know diseases yeah, so bugs and, and things disease. okay so as that applies to our faith and nurturing and um, growing our faith some environmental things that we can take into consideration I think we can find in Scripture mm -hmm. so I love what James says so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts I love that God has planted his word in your hearts if we're in his word right mm -hmm. For it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Right. So, again, in God's word, there's instructions in there that help to protect us from some of these issues that we put our own selves in. Right. right? right. I think that's a challenge to all of us to not just be hearers of the word mm -hmm. but be doers of the word mm -hmm. so that's one way to control our environment is just just get that filth and the evil out of our lives and separate ourselves from that another way that we can control our environment i love what hebrews has mm -hmm. to say let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near what happens though is we neglect our meeting and getting together and we isolate ourselves and we do those kinds of things and I know everybody's saying well they're telling us to. I'm not talking about during uh, the pandemic that's going on and honestly Facebook live is is a way to say you know I'm not even letting that pandemic separate me from gathering mm -hmm. as believers even though it's the you know through Facebook live but we're mm -hmm. still gathering we're still connecting is the Bible app too um, our girls Bible study is starting a new yep. plan where you can do plans together go through devotions together and comment about it and be in constant communication about those types of things so there are resources FaceTime and all these things out there for us to stay connected I think we're realizing how much we need each other right now really as we're being forced yeah. um, apart really Absolutely. Um, physically you know forced apart so we're realizing that's a longing in our heart that God put in us it look back at Genesis it says a man was not meant to be alone mm -hmm. and we need each other and we need like-minded people people who are for the growth of our faith Absolutely. people that are rooting for that and trying to help with that. When we surround ourselves with people like that, mm -hmm. it is, it's like Miracle Grow yeah, uh, right. for our faith. It is, yeah. In a lot of ways. So I We're just sticking made, with the plan. I just, I just made that up. <laughs> hey. Hey. All right. <laughs> so uh, the last thing is uh, much like a plant needs sunlight, mm -hmm. uh, we need to remain connected and rooted to the sun. Uh, the Son of God because he ultimately is our main source of faith and John uh, explains that very well by saying this Jesus told him I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me if you know me you will also know my father uh, I just think it's also powerful that in knowing that Jesus is the only way that if we 
draw closer to him and we try to know him more that it said in verse 7 that we had just read that if you know me you also know my father mm -hmm. and that just says a lot so right. when we're praying and when we're in God's Word and when we're gathering together as believers we are drawing closer to God our Heavenly Father we're, we're drawing closer to the Son Jesus and we're also growing closer to the Spirit God's Spirit that lives in us so in doing all those things and trying to nurture and grow our faith God can do amazing things with that. Why? Because we're rooted in Him. Mm -hmm. Not rooted in our own abilities mm -hmm. and skills and things like that, but rooted in Him. And then the, the faith will follow, right? God will use amazing things. Our faith will, will continue to grow. We'll continue to trust Him. Um, and, and He'll become the first person we go to right. instead of down the line. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I want us to move to a time of communion. And I know y'all may be going, we ain't got no crackers and <laughs> juice, and how are we going to have communion right now? Um, listen, the, that is a symbol that it draws us to closer to Jesus and what he did for us on the cross, mm -hmm. what he did by uh, dying on that cross for us and for our sins. And... We can remember without a cracker and juice. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent prompt, uh, obviously, but I want us to really focus on being in communion uh, with our Heavenly Father, being in communion with Jesus, with His Spirit, and just thank Him for what He did. Be grateful. Pray the way uh, Jordan has, has taught us to pray by using the acronym ACTS. I want us to also move into a time of worship and kind of just do this all at the same time and mm -hmm. and just reflect on what we've heard so far uh, to kind of just invite our Heavenly Father God's Spirit Jesus into this moment that that we're having but to also um, join us as we worship and I know that you got a song that uh, that you have for us and that mm -hmm. you've prepared for us. And I didn't know if you had anything about that that you yeah. wanted to point out. So it's called Give Me Faith. It seems pretty hey. fitting. Hey. <laughs> Give Me Faith by Elevation Worship. And it is so perfect. Um, as we talk about, it's not our faith and how we can grow our faith and things that, um, you know, ways that we can make our faith bigger, but it's through how big God is. Mm. And the song says, Give Me Faith to Trust What You Say because, not because of us, but because you're good, talking about God, because you're good and your love is great. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into a little bit further into the song, to the bridge, and it says that I may be weak, but your spirit is strong in me. Mm -hmm. My flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. And it's such a good thing that we need as we're talking about faith and we're remembering that it's not about us, but it's about who God is and God is so much greater than us. And it's because of him that our faith is going to grow. And the more that we seek him, the more that our faith is going to grow. And it's just going to get deeper and be more rooted and nothing is going to be impossible um, for us when our faith is like that. So. That's the song that we have for you today. And um, just really make that your prayer this yeah. morning, um, that Lord, you give me faith right. today. Yeah.
This, uh, that we've had this time of just communion with God and, and being in his presence and worshiping him and, and just hopefully finding peace in him. One of the things that I remember from, from the story that, of the dad talking to Jesus mm-hmm. about healing his son, you know, the dad says, if you can heal him, and Jesus is like, if I can. Right. And I love uh, the dad's response he, he's basically saying listen I do believe but help me with my unbelief that is um, arguably my my favorite line in scripture you know I do believe but help me with my unbelief mm-hmm. and um, that's basically saying I, I don't have the strength Lord I don't have the power to uh, or the faith I know it comes from you, mm-hmm. and I need you in this moment. Right. And this is how this is uh, going to go down: is is by your power, not by mine. And right. not. So, um, I would just like to for us to close in prayer together. We thank you all so much for for joining us. Mm-hmm. We again know that this isn't um, what we want. We all want to meet in uh, in person. Right. Uh, here at the church and hug each other and high five and those types of things but we're trying to do the right thing uh, based off the the current situation that we're in so we're glad that you've joined us on Facebook live YouTube live whatever it is that that you're watching us on Uh, but if you would just pray with us right now Lord God we um, just pray that uh, we can stay rooted in you that our faith is just rooted in you that we trust you that that no matter what we know that you're going to come through may we have an unwavering faith uh, not because of just our our abilities to have faith not just because we're super christians and and uh, but but because we recognize by being rooted in you that our faith is going to grow And so, Lord, we just uh, pray for that now. We just ask uh, that you help us to do that. Lord, we want to pray for all those um, that are sick. It seems like there's so many illnesses right now, things to be fearful of. But, Lord, help us in that fear. Help us with those sicknesses. We know that you can heal us, Lord, if it is your will. Um, But let us trust you in that for those that are dealing with specifically the coronavirus, or maybe it's another type of illness. Lord, I just pray for those that you give them peace throughout this illness. Lord, I pray for those that are not sick, um, that you protect them, that they can stay away and stay healthy and keep their families healthy. Lord, just guide us in this time, um, guide our leaders in this time. I pray that 
you um, help us to respect our leaders and the decisions that they are making. We pray that the leaders are going to you for their counsel, that they're going to those that are experienced in this type of thing, we're dealing specifically with the coronavirus, but other big things in our world as well, that they are really researching and, and taking the time to make it the best decision for the people. Um, and Lord, we just ask that you are guiding them and that you are helping us to respect the decisions that they are making, Lord. Yeah, and give them strength because they, I imagine they are exhausted mm -hmm. trying to make these stressful decisions for our country um, and just all the leaders in the world. And Lord, I just pray that we can continue to be the church to recognize the needs of our community and the needs of our church. Help us to uh, show compassion uh, during this time. Just again, help us to, to be the church and to put other people first over ourselves. Lord God, that's uh, our prayer. Father, we also pray that you would calm our fears. We need to trust you and we need to believe that you're gonna come through no matter what. Uh, so help us to calm our fears and to find that peace that only you can provide and that is really unexplainable. Lord, we ask in this pandemic that we grow closer to you in this time, not further away, that we don't um, let these things become bigger than who you are because you are greater than all of it. You have control over all of it. Lord, we ask that in this time we recognize the things that are important to you that are important in our lives things that maybe we weren't making priorities before but that we should moving forward that that we use this time to grow deeper and more rooted in who you are most of all we thank you so much for your son that he is the source of our faith we thank you so much for that Lord, I ask that you give us faith. Let us be rooted in you as we go throughout our week and throughout these months and even past the pandemic and the chaos that we can stay rooted in who you are. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I miss you guys. I love you. We love you. And um, that's it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ta-da-da-da-da-da. Wah!